mates. Well, I reckon this is it. But the, the fact is, and he's a, he's a, he's a fact for you, mate. What's up, everyone? It's Adam from FWCI here with a special episode of World Wrestling Australia because we had some pretty big news breaking today. Tony Storm, now gone from WWE, she asked for her release and was granted it. This is all right on the heels of her challenging Charlotte for the SmackDown Women's title and that whole feud with the pies in the face and that complete mess and she's been on smackdown for a few months at this point more than a few months and they've really not done a great deal with her so i fully respect the fact that tony storm has said you know what I think I might just take my leave, thanks, but no thanks kind of thing, and walked away from the company. This is a fantastic sign that wrestlers are able to take a bit more control. But Tony Storm was on the Out of Character podcast with Ryan Satin just a few days ago, and honestly, she sounded so much more personable and charismatic from a verbal standpoint on that podcast than I think I've ever seen her be on WWE TV from a verbal perspective. I've always sort of criticized Tony Storm's promos as not really, there's something doesn't really feel natural about it. And I'm sure the answer for that is she gets given direction on what to do by WWE and it's not a good fit. It doesn't vibe with who she is. But honestly, I was quite, I was pleasantly surprised with how you know, just fun and, you know, enjoyable of a guest she was for, for Ryan Satin. So what a weird time for her to do that podcast, then ask for the release uh, shortly after as well. Like, I'm sure this has been on the cards for a while and she was just waiting to see, all right, what happens when I fight Charlotte for the title? Clearly nothing that was, uh, you know, worth sticking around for. But this is just another example of the Aussies kind of having a bit of a rough go in WWE. I mean, really at the moment, the only Aussie that's really entertaining to watch has been Grayson Waller, who was apparently the new CM Punk, according to Vince McMahon, because he's, you know, in there with AJ Styles and they're actually getting behind him. And I'm in full support of Grayson Waller and I love his promo. I love his attitude. He's one of the Aussies that have, you know, been through WWE that really embraced and holds onto and harnessed his Aussiness, if that makes sense. A lot of them kind of get a little bit whitewashed into just being sort of an Americanized person, but that's just talks Australian instead kind of thing. They've never really brought that Australianness into their character quite like Grayson Waller has. Um, Billy Kay is the other example of that, or Jessica McKay, who's over on uh, Impact Wrestling now. So with the exception of Grayson Waller, What's really going on with the Aussies that is worth, you know, tuning into WWE to see? I mean, we we had the Index storyline, which was fantastic, and I am keeping an eye on what's going on with um, Persia and Indy. That's a, a storyline that is, I'm still invested in at least. I feel like they've dropped the ball a little bit with Duke Hudson. Um, I liked the idea of Duke versus Grayson, of uh, the Cameron Grimes a lot more than the actual execution of it. So again, just another kind of disappointing outcome. Zion Quinn, I'm glad that he's getting a bit of a run in NXT and the, the storyline with um, uh, Electra Lopez and Legado Del Fantasma. I mean, I am enjoying that to a degree. It's a little bit corny at times, but the fact that Zion Quinn is getting some time on screen in NXT on a regular basis is at least good to see. But then we get Rhea Ripley what has happened with Rhea Ripley is she's dropped off to such a massive degree. I mean, we've gone from her being the unstoppable force. I mean, she was up there like, you put her in the ring with a Nia Jax and the people are gonna be going off. You put her in the ring with a Charlotte and like without even touching, people are gonna know that this is a big match. Now Rhea Ripley's kind of been diminished into somebody that can get rolled up and pinned in a random tag match on Raw. And that is a disgrace on WWE's part. I mean, Rhea Ripley was one of the, if not the most promising up and coming stars, you know, of the last five years. They've, yeah, they've got a lot going on there, but you think to what people were saying about Rhea Ripley back when she was in NXT and, you know, how there was no ceiling for her and everything like that. Why is she toiling away in a women's tag team as a bland, stupid baby face taking pinfalls? It's it's dreadful to see. And uh, it's really taken the wind out of my sails with um, watching the WWE product at all. I, I obviously want to keep up with what's going on on NXT because we've got a few Aussies over there. But outside of that, I mean, that's really the only thing that is keeping me invested in WWE's product and I on the topic of this I hope that Tony Storm 
lands in AEW. I know it's the cliche thing to say, but Tony Storm going to AEW would just make me so damn happy. We need an Aussie in AEW, and she would be the perfect fit. I mean, AEW's got a fantastic men's roster and the women's roster is good and it's getting better but there's still more pieces that need to be you know figured out or be pieces to be brought in and i think tony storm is going to be a fantastic fit there no matter what they want her to be whether it's to you know come in and challenge Britt baker who was apparently pretty excited at the prospect of a tony storm match based on what she was uh, tweeting out whether it's going to be helping uh, you know, Jade Cargill get a little bit better, better. whether it's going to, you know, be a best of seven with Nyla Rose or Penelope Ford or teaming with Anna Jay, like whatever it is, like I really think she would do a great job there. And what we heard on this podcast recently, if AEW can harness more of that personality from Tony Storm, then, you know, the sky is the limit for her. And I think in AEW, she would have a great platform to actually get a shot to do what she says i mean she talked about being in um catering it sucks like you're sitting there waiting there like when is it going to be my turn to show the world what i've been training my whole life to do and i don't know I've, I've, i don't understand what wwe's um mindset is with hiring this talent and then not you know giving them any opportunity to follow it up like people are just sitting backstage look at Shane Thorne he didn't have a TV match for you know months and months and months like maybe even over a year before he was released like what has he been doing for the last 12 months it's just ridiculous so I'm glad to see Tony Storm has uh, made this choice to move on obviously hope we get her in AEW she's always given me a bit of a um Kurt Angle vibe in the ring. I know Mark Henry uh, recently said that she gives him vibes of Chris Jericho, and I can see what he means by that. For me personally, I see more Kurt Angle, just more with her physical in-ring style, just the, the suplexes, her body type, how she, she's very short, she's got a low center of gravity, she's got, you know, a great sort of like physical attributes as well. So I really enjoyed Tony Storm's work. Uh, I want to see her go suplex the hell out of the AEW women's roster. That would make my 2022 very, very happy. But looking back on Tony Storm's career, I mean, you would have to say that the um, UK title tournament win over Rhea Ripley is, that's got to be her, her peak match. That was, I thought that was setting the seeds for a WrestleMania main event you know, down the track. That's the kind of vibe that I got from, from that whole thing. I think that's probably what the peak of her time in WWE slash NXT was. I did enjoy her little run there a couple of years well, earlier this year, I think, when she um, showed up to fight Zoe Stark and Io Shirai. And, you know, she had a match with Rhea as well, which was, I thought, chapter two in that whole story. Obviously, you know, we're not going to see Rhea versus Tony for a long time now. So that's the news from today, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys have to say about this one. If I had to give this one a you gotta be joking me, you better believe it'd be a you gotta be joking me because, yeah, Tony Storm deserves a lot better than she received. You gotta be joking me. And it would also be a you beauty because she's on her way to greener pastures. You beauty. Aww. You beauty. So subscribe if you're new to the channel. There's usually weekly episodes of World Wrestling Australia. I should be kicking back off around Rumble season. There's heaps of uh, WWE gaming content on this channel as well. I've got a Lucha Underground podcast coming out very soon. Heaps of stuff happening in the world of wrestling on FWCI Sports and Gaming. So hit the subscribe button. That helps a whole lot at the moment. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. Peace. Peace.